Hello, let's continue our Sudoku adventure with The Coolest Whisper by GDC. And yes, uh, who else drew this cool S when they were in school? I certainly did. <laughs> nice. Um, so let's go over the rules here. It is going to be thermometers and German whispers. If you know what those are, that, that's what those are. <laughs> if not, let's go over the rules. So we have normal 6x6 six six Sudoku rules, meaning in every row, every column, and every 2x3 box, we are placing the digits 1 to 6 exactly once each. We also have uh, thermometers in the grid. That's the circles with the thick lines attached. Imagine them like a mercury thermometer where the mercury pulls at the bottom and as it heats up, the mercury goes up. And so as temperatures rise, you get larger numbers as you move up the stick. So same with these thermometers, you get larger, larger numbers as you move away from the bulb end. So if this was say a two, this needs to be bigger than two, say a four, this now needs to be bigger than four, say a five and a six. They don't have to be consecutive or anything like that. They just have to keep getting bigger. What I can't do is do two, four, three, because even though three is bigger than two, it's not bigger than four. You have to keep getting bigger as you move. All right, and then we also have six by six German whispers. It's because German whispers change a little bit depending on the size of the puzzle. Uh, to keep them interesting. And so in this case, uh, adjacent digits uh, along the line, these are considered, it's it's adjacent on the line, right? So the line's always going to have, each cell on the line will have two adjacent digits except the endpoints, which only have one adjacent digit, right? But the adjacent digits along the line have a difference of at least three, meaning if this was a two, this cell here needs to have a digit that's at least three away, right? So it could be a five, because five minus two is three. It could be a six, because six minus two is four, but those are actually the only two digits. Uh, we can't do a one, that's only a difference of one. Two is a difference of zero, three, four. Those, those differences aren't high enough, only five or six. Same with here, this would be a five or a six. You can repeat digits though, that's fine, as long as Sudoku allows it. And that's it, those are the rules. There's a link in the description if you'd like to try the puzzle yourself, and I'm going to get started right now. I am going to get started on this giant German whisper line here. In fact, it's two, it's two lines that aren't connected. But let's see if we can connect them together. So the thing that I'm going to do with German whispers is we're going to talk about lows and highs. A low being one, two, three, a high being four, five, six. So we split one through six right down the middle, called the ones that are lower low and the ones that are high are high. Makes sense, right? Well, what happens if we're in the one, two, three range on a German whisper line? Well, we can't subtract three from any of those digits. We would end up with zero or less which doesn't exist. So we have to add three. When we add three, we're getting into the four, five, six range. Now from four, five, six, we can't add three again. So we have to subtract three. So we get into the one, two, three range. This is what I was talking about with German whispers. The number changes depending on the size of the puzzle. It's specifically chosen so that you get this low high behavior. So what we're going to do is we're going to use two colors here. I'm going to use um, green and purple to represent the low high every other that happens. We don't know which one's low, we don't know which one's high, but we do know that all the greens are the same low highity, the same magnitude, and the purples are the same low highity. Now the question is, can we link that to this whisper line? So what what properties do we know about lows and highs? Well, every row, every column, and every box has exactly three lows and three highs. So for example, we already have two lows used in this row, so we only get one more low. Um, now we want to think about this thermo for a second here, because if this was one, two, three, four, the bare minimum, we'd still only have one low available, just the three. So that's something to think about. Um, hmm. So no matter what, a high is going to be used up here. So if these were high, that would be the last high, but we don't know that they're high. Six, five, four, three. There's at least one low here as well. But again, we don't know that green is low, so we don't know that we can say much about that. Um, okay, there's, there's something interacting here that's going to help. I don't necessarily want to... I mean, I, I, we could give these two other colors. Like, um, I don't know, we can give them red and yellow. Just to visualize how these work out. Um, it's a lot of color, though. So, okay, we know we know one of the reds is here. Don't we? Do we? No, we don't know that, because this could be two lows. This could be two, three. Hmm. If this was two, three, what effect does that have on this thermo, though? Because if it was two, three, we could go one, then we'd have to go four, five, six. 
two, three would force these to be high. It would force these to be high. This would be high. It seems to work. Okay, there's some interaction I'm not seeing here. It might be obvious. Um, what is it though? <laughs> Maybe this column we can think about because we have the whole column colored. So we have two greens. Ah, so that, oh yeah, so green and red have to be different because we can't have four greens. There we go. I'm sorry it took me so long to see that. So that means red is not green. Red is the, red is the purple. Because remember, green and purple are paired up. So if red is purple, then that means yellow is green. And that's huge, right? Because that means the rest of this row is purple. The rest of this row is green. And that, that forces green to be high, right? Because if green were low, then we'd have to have four lows on this thermo. So um, I like to use um, orange for high and then blue for low. I just am consistent about that because my brain's used to it. And so now we're going to switch. Now that we know the low high, we're going to switch to that. And we're just going to finish off all these rows that can be finished. Um, okay, so this cannot be one, two, three, because that would be three lows, and then this low would be a fourth low. So this last one has to be high, and that lets us finish this column with a low here. Um, anything else like that? Uh, not that I see. We might start doing digits here. So we know these are all low, one, two, three. Um, anything we can say about that? That I can tell. This is a low with two highs. Okay, so let's actually fill these thermos out, right? This is four, five, six, but this can't be a six and this can't be a four because this needs to be bigger than this. Same exact thing here. So we end up with, with pairs, a four or five pair here. Uh, these are from one, two, three. This can't be three and this can't be one, but unfortunately, these don't have a relationship like that. So we can't make more pairs out of that. Um, so Okay, but this four or five pair tells us that this cannot be four or five, and we know it can't be six because it's not at the end of the thermo. If this were six, this would have no value. So this has to be low because it can't be any of the highs. It's, it, it, it can't be six because of the thermo, and it can't be four or five because of the pair there. So this is one, two, three, and it's low, making this high. That's all of our lows for this column. That actually tells us our first digit. That's a six because we have a four or five pair in the column. So the last high is six, giving us five and four here, giving us five and six here. Very nice. Okay. So now we know in this column, the three is in one of these two cells. In fact, we can clean up this thermo a bit, saying this can't be three and this can't be one. And now there's only one place for three in the column right there, leaving a one-two pair behind, placing the three here. Okay. Um, the five and six are known. So this is the high. This is four because it's high and this is low. Uh, we don't know much about the one-two threes there. This is from one-two because it can't be three. Um, all right, is there more I can do with this? We know this is from 1, 2 because it sees a 3, which makes a 1, 2 pair. So this is our 3. This is a 1, 2. It means 3 is in one of these. Aha, so can this be 3 is a question we want to ask. I haven't talked about 3 and 4 on the German Whisper yet because I haven't needed to. But imagine if this was 3. What can go with a 3? Well, three is both 3 and 4 are special in that there's only one digit they can go with. The three can only go with six. Every other digit's too close. So I need to put a six here and here, but we cannot put a six here. There's already six in the row. So th this cannot actually be a three, or we'd put double six here, and this six clashes. So this is our three, and this is a one, two. Uh, we know this is from four, five, because it sees a six. We know this is a four, actually. <laughs> and so four is special in that it only goes with one. So we can place the one there. That's a two. It's four because of the box. Uh, this is a one, two. And it's not one. So yeah, that's the that's the two to finish the column. That's a one. That's two and one. All right. And these are from five, six. Um, either five or six works for this because we're not putting a three next to it. Um, so yeah, something else is going to resolve that. We know there's a four in one of these two cells. The four, sorry, let's actually clean this up. That's a two. So we know this is a one, three pair. The four has to go with the one. We don't know which one is the one, but either... Either this four goes with double one, or this four goes with the one here. We don't know the order. Um, now, if this was a three, we'd get double six here, which seems reasonable. In fact, we can place this four, and this is a five, six pair. This is a two, three pair. Okay, the three is going to end up with a six. Ah, this can't be a three, because this can't be six. 
So that's two, that's three. That gives us six and five. Nice, that's one, that's three. Three goes with six, one goes with four. That's five and six, that's a two. That's a five. This is a six for the row. I'm probably just not scanning properly at this point. Um, let's see, what else is left here? We need a five down here. That's the five, which is orange. That lets us finish our coloring. All right, so here's our one, here's our four, here's our one, and we're done. Neat puzzle, GDC. It took me it took me a bit to notice this column, but yeah, double coloring it uh, was probably the way to go. Because as soon as I double colored it, it became clear that this column was full of German whispers, and then that that resolved what they had to be together. And then these thermos did a really neat job of resolving then that um, you know how the um, which ones were low and which ones were high. Sorry, that's what I was trying to say. So yeah, that was neat. And also we got we got our cool S here. <laughs> really nice drawing of that. So I enjoyed that, and that was a great way to finish off our Thermo theme week. So uh, tomorrow is uh, Sudoku Adventure number 500. Can you believe we have done 499 of these puzzles already? One per day. It's taken us, uh, what, a year and a year and a, some change to do that. Uh, and we're still going strong. Uh, here's to the next 500. So tomorrow, expect something very special. So uh, I won't give away any more than that, but definitely... Uh, pay attention tomorrow to what we'll be delivering for you. Uh, we did want to do something special for number 500. So uh, very neat. Uh, thank you, GDC, for uh, closing out the theme week with such a cool puzzle. Uh, probably the coolest whisper puzzle you've seen. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this, why not leave a like, subscribe, and a kind comment below. Mm -hmm.